Hello everyone. Today I'm once again continuing with my poetry basic series and after dealing with the nose and the mouth, it's time to deal with the eyes. As usual, I'm starting off with the don't part of the do's and don'ts painting of a realistic eye. So what is different in this video from the previous uh, videos is that I already have the realistic eye painted in a previous video which I will link below in the video description for you to check out. It is an older video so I apologize that the video quality is not the best. Obviously, we uh, have to start with a very good drawing and I cannot stress enough uh, how important it is to have a good drawing to start with. And I already have a previous video on how to draw an eye from scratch and uh, which I will also link in the video description below. I also have a, a third video linked in the video description uh, below where I will show off uh, this particular drawing of an eye where I am finishing off the eye with graphite pencils um, and, and like I said I will also link that in the video description below so let's go back to the don'ts so the very first common mistake that people make when drawing an eye is they start with an outline and keep that outline intact the lines that we see around the eye are not necessarily created by lines but they're created by the hairs the shadows and the lights and darks so remember that please and for any uh, a realistic drawing outlines is not the right way to go another um, mistake that people make is that uh, both to make to make the both ends of the eye pointy ends whereas there is actually only one end pointy end and the other end has the tear gland or the lacrimal duct uh, which you can see in the painting on the right hand side the final mistake that I want to highlight is filling the whole area with one solid color around the eye. If you look at the realistic eye painting that I have on the right hand side, you will see that the skin around the eye has many, many tones because of the lights and shadows. Some of the areas are higher and lower and some are um, more outwards and the light is bouncing off each of the area in a different way and obviously each of the area has a different color and different shade of skin so it is the highlights and lights and darks and just not as one solid color that creates the eye so it is one important thing uh, to note about and one common mistake that people make now another mistake that people make is once they have painted the eye uh, and uh, the area around the eye and created the outline they fill the entire inside of the eye apart from the pupil with one solid white color uh, now the eye is not the inside of the eye is not white solid white especially underneath the eyelids you will have a shadow area and that shadow area will have a darker tone than the surrounding area or around the pupil there will obviously be some highlight areas which will be extremely bright some of the areas that are behind will have a darker and lighter colors so be careful of what colors you're putting around the pupil as for the pupil, again, it is not one solid color or neither it is one solid color on the outer edge and then one darker inside edge of black. So depending on what color the eyes are, there will be multiple tones on different areas of the eye depending on how the a light is falling on the surface of the pupil and how you see it from different angles. So that is one more thing to keep in mind when you're painting an eye so that's uh, another important thing one another important mistake that people make as beginners is about the eyebrows when I go and paint this don't part of the eyebrows you will see that I'm blocking in at as a one single block of dark color 
just like the outline of the eye the eyebrow is also not one block of solid color it has multiple tones uh, or rather it has hairs which uh, you have to designate in clumps and clusters some of it goes in different area uh, directions there are some flyaway hair sometimes um, and so an eyebrow is not one solid block of black or brown hair it is actually a cluster of hair so you will need to focus on the texture one last thing about painting an eye that is that you're not supposed to do is what i'm currently working on the eyelashes cannot stress enough how this is important to create a realistic eye if you see the demonstration on the right hand side you will see that those eyelashes are curved eyelashes almost always are curved and sometimes they will be curved in different direction and almost always the eyelashes on the top eyelid are much bigger than the ones at the bottom eyelid and depending on uh, gender and age and a race um, the eyelashes and uh, shape of the eyes can vary however if you want to paint realistic eyelashes you will have to make sure that they are curved and they are spaced out and they are in varied directions and uh, obviously follow a reference photo in your initial days to give you a better idea now i am going to start off with a profile of the eye drawing and then i will paint it and go over the details on uh, again over the details about what to do in case of painting a realistic eye now you can see that i sketched out the eye just by a general tone and i am not trying to preserve the outline in, in fact when i'm putting in my mid tone or the skin tone i am actually getting rid of almost all the lines that i had created while sketching just leaving a brief um idea about where the eye uh, is placed even i went over the eye eyelash area um, or rather the eyebrow area and covered it with the skin tone now in the inside of the eye you can see that i have not put white in any of the areas in fact under the eyelid i have put a pretty dark a tone of purple and gray or rather grayish purple purple mixed with a little bit of black and white and then the rest of the eye i have uh, put a uh, gray color mixed with a little bit of white so actually there is no area that is white and this will kind of depend on how the light is reflecting off the eye and what is the position of the light you can have some bright highlights which can be white but almost always it is not going to be one solid color of white now around the area of the eye you can see that i although i started off with a mid tone over the entire area i'm coming back with lights and shadows all around the area and some of the areas i'm darkening and some of the areas i'm lightening and you have to understand that some of the areas in and around the eyes the skin around the eye is not one flat surface it has got many curves some of the areas are higher and more protruded than the other areas and obviously the protruded areas will receive more light light will reflect off more from those areas than the areas that are indented accordingly those areas will be lighter or darker so that is what i am trying to create and again the crease of the eye, eyelid and uh, the eye uh, eyebrow and uh, the edge of the eye where the eyelashes are coming from i am not creating any outlines i am just going over the area with a general shape now on the eyelid you can see that i started off with a mid tone of dark brown however then i am adding a uh, kind of uh, different shades of green and yellow because this is kind of a hazel brown eye depending on the color of the eye eye for that particular reference or that particular person that you are drawing obviously you have to vary the tones and lights and darks in the pupil but once again it is not one solid block of color and not even two different uh, circles of dark and light color so that is one important thing to understand i'm creating uh, the different shadow areas 
and once I'm drawing the lines I'm then coming back and kind of uh, smudging the lines a little bit now for the eyelashes you can see that how each and every eyelash that I'm creating are bigger or longer or shorter and are of different sizes and are kind of in a little bit different direction that is what actually creates a very realistic look same with the eyebrows um, kind of think of them as not single strands of eyes um, no, or rather single strands of hair but uh, think in terms of clumps and clusters in uh, in case of eyebrows and that is what will yield the realistic look um, this particular drawing that I'm doing I am not adding a ton of details but if you want to have the very realistic look you have to go in between the eye eyelashes with the lighter highlights to kind of create the separation underneath the eyebrows uh, most of more often than not will be the brightest area the brow bone and there you can see the do's and don'ts of eye in the front view and the profile of the eye. I hope you learned a thing or two and like this video. Give me a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe.